REZ 2013-13, Mr. Davenport. Yes, sir. Um, this is the case that we dealt with for um, the Lester Family Trust, or really Mr. Doug Lester is the property owner we've been dealing with. And ultimately, we tried to put the history down there, but at the end of the day, county leadership wanted to pursue this case like we did when we adopted those um, back towards the ULDC, and that was really an appeal. And so the property owner is requesting EA zoning. You have the recommendations before you and the discussions, and um, ultimately that's what is being requested is to take this farm, um, all of it except for that CH portion on I-75 back to an EA agricultural zone. Any questions for Mr. Dale? Okay, hearing none. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, my pause was a little too long. Um, reading what they're trying to do, Jason, can you can you discuss why RA wasn't <clears throat> wasn't a good solution for this piece of property? Yes, sir. Um, to me, from a planning standpoint, if you look at the zoning map and the location with its you know respect to county services, you have water sewer all over that area. You also have some existing residences to the south. Um, I thought RA would be a better fit just because it allowed for agricultural, but it also tried to accommodate for those neighbors. Um, the future plans for this area as well, we do because of water and sewer, the location within the county anticipates some extra residential growth. It's, it's one of those areas where you're not out off of Rocky Moor or Cambridge Road. I mean, you are in the central part of the county we anticipate <coughs> growth. However, those particular plans, the county's plans, are just really at crossroads with Mr. Lester's plan. Because he really is very passionate about what he's doing with his cattle operation and trying to continue that for as long as possible and not developing, uh, not doing anything residential or even um, otherwise commercial related. So you just really have crossroads there. But that's why I, I thought RA was a compromise between residential and ag. And for him, his position is he just wants whatever the least restricted for his current use would be that EA zone. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have, I have, I have roughly two points. Yes. Um, basically, uh, have, have other residents, I guess, with farms in, in this zone um, been notified of possible changes to their zoning? Because uh, from, from what I heard from him was that it was changed without his notice. And um, I just hope that no blanking type of zoning is taking place and I just want to know have you taken any steps to ensure that you know, it doesn't affect other, I guess, people with farms? Yep. Um, my understanding was yes, uh, when that zoning, when those changes did take place, basically when the ULDC was adopted and those changes were taking place, everyone were, was notified. However, in this situation, it's believed that Mr. Lester's father got the notification and either didn't react or didn't act on it. And so consequently, uh, he's now, I believe, deceased and that leaves the son with the, with the farm and uh, just got overlooked. Mr. Davenport might could add a little to that. And I will, I'll put together a, a list of the various public hearings and meetings, et cetera, that were, that were put out. I will, I'll put that together for the commission to see if I can have that for reference. About what kind of notification, notification did happen and I'll put that in a written form to you guys. And I guess the other question I have, Mr. Chairman, just with uh, regards to uh, uh, when we change zoning or what have you, do we do site inspections? Uh, to my understanding, he's had the cattle out there the whole time. And um, I guess when you, if you go out there and see all the cattle and you, you change it to another zoning that might make it somewhat in violation of the other uh, zoning type, you know, uh, do we, what do we do in those instances? Because to my understanding, based on the new zoning that it was changed to, it puts them in violation as well. Mr. Danville? Yeah, I mean, when you, I'll try to get a slide together where maybe you can see what the county zoning looked like before the ULDC was adopted and after. And there were quite a number of properties that changed zoning. And so I believe we worked with a couple of consultants, but I don't believe that there was a site visit done on every single one to say, here's what this particular property is. I think that the county's plans for the area were looked at uh, and what local knowledge we have using the commissioners and that's what the decision was made when we looked at the entire county and said this is the zoning we're going to move with. Carmella, can you make any comments in reference to that please? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. When the ULDC was adopted and the zoning 
zone map change, there were a lot of non-conforming uses created. They weren't necessarily violations. They were non-conforming uses, which in a non-conforming use, you can continue that use as long as you don't discontinue it. If you discontinue it for a period of time, then there's a process by which you can go to zone board of appeals and ask to reestablish that use, but no violations were. I, I appreciate it because it was like, you know, by being RA and having 300 cattle, uh, it, was, it was against the rules to be, have 300 cattle with RA status. So appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Also, uh, I need to be corrected as well. It's my understanding that Mr. Lester Sr. is still alive. Yes, I just don't know the capabilities right now. All right, uh, any other questions? All right, let's move.